Is fast food actually that fast? Well, in this cooking podcast, Brian Lagerstrom and I have a conversation while six cameras capture our every movement in the kitchen. I just don't want to make another like the 500th cheesecake video on the internet. I wanna do a deep dive into why iceberg lettuce is one of the most important ingredients. I think that's the thing that is easiest for people to screw up in terms of seasoning because when it's under seasoned, it's so lame. It gets really dark at our house too when, we, when, it, when it becomes thumbnail time. But I feel like you need to go to the far ends, be yeah. able to have the, the perspective of the other, you know, the other side. For those of you who aren't like versed in Taco Bell, supreme just means sour cream and tomato. Oh man, the combination of soft, crispy, soft. The texture is what carries it. And by that time I was like, I never want to eat cheesecake yeah. again. Stuff has definitely gotten soggy, so I think we're gonna miss <laughs> our crunch a little bit, but uh. Well, if you're out there, please, I'm begging you. Can we make Taco Bell's discontinued double-decker taco before the one we ordered gets here? Well, let's break it down. We're making a double decker taco, which is a discontinued Taco Bell item, but it's my all time favorite and I would always order that. Two double deckers, two soft shells, two hard shells, Baja Blast is my classic order. But we're getting like the building blocks of the double decker and we're gonna kind of build one ourselves. We have just placed an order for Taco Bell. Nothing has been pulled out, so this is like a true home cook experience. Uh, let's go. Brian's gonna be the bean daddy up here <laughs> and I'm gonna be back uh, doing the beef so uh, let's, uh, let's, let's do it. Yeah, I've also never cooked in this kitchen before, so I don't know where anything is. Uh, so we'll figure it out. What, what do you need? What do you need? Beans, I'll start with the beans. Oh, I got you, the, yeah, I got you the beans. Bean daddy gonna start with the beans. Thanks. Um, I'm grabbing the crema. I need the beef. We need the cheese. Like, how long do you think it's gonna take for them to get here? It said like, 15, it said like 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Okay. So okay. I think that's like pretty doable actually. Yeah. Um, especially with two of us being able to, you know, kind of kind of game plan, tackle everything. All right. Are you, are you generally like a get everything out before you kind of start cooking person? Yeah, for sure. Like it just makes me stressed if I have to be running around to grab stuff. I mean, it depends. Like if it's a weeknight cooking, like I'll just start with nothing prepped or anything anywhere. Right. And it's like literally a race to see how fast I can get it done. Yeah. But if it's like for a recipe video, like things are pretty, pretty uh, prepped out ahead of time. And then I'm always curious too, like obviously as someone who also films, like how, like when you're making recipes, how often are you testing them? And then like how often are you eating the same? It's like an issue I get into a lot is I'll make, like I made the cacio e pepe like deep dive video and like I literally have not had cacio e pepe since like, you know, a <laughs> yeah. year later. So uh, like, do you, like how often are you eating the same things over and over and then like, do you get sick of them? Um, so like when I do most, we do mostly recipe videos. So like the, the standard like sort of routine is like an initial test. It's usually uh, just to kind of get my idea of like what, what direction I want to head, what I like, what I don't like. And then it'll be, if, if the first round goes well, then I'll do a second round to be like, okay, I'm going to do this, but I'm going to tweak the tiny little last things I need to do. So yep. two, two times is common, but if it's like a baking recipe or bread or something, it can take like five or six times. Yeah. And then it is extremely stressful because like, you know, we have kind of a set cadence. So the video has got to be done by a certain time. And then it's like, cool, this cheesecake didn't work out. So I got to, Make it again and again and again until yeah. it's right. Yeah. So sometimes it takes a lot of time. Yeah, that's like one thing that I struggled with, like making recipe videos, especially when I was like testing multiple things. It's just like, cause you like, you don't wanna just like make it one. Luckily, like some with some of the lifestyle videos I do now, it's like, it is more just like, I just make it once cause that's how I'd make it at home. And it's yeah. normally decent enough, but it's like different if you're, you know, trying to like in the garlic video, it's like, well, I gotta make three of the exact same versions of, you know, like olio aeolia, which like, <laughs> now like I'm like a little sick of garlic too, cause it's all I've been thinking Dude, about yeah, and yeah, like yeah. smelling for and the Yeah, past. your clothes like smell like garlic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get sick of it by the end of the process for sure. Like by the time you're like eating it on camera in the video, like a lot of the initial fun and excitement of the thing is gone. Cause it's like, honestly, like if you're cooking Thanksgiving dinner yeah. and like you've made the whole thing by the end of it and you're finally sitting down, people who weren't involved in the cooking enjoy it so much more than you. Yeah. Cause you're like, cool. Like I've been thinking about this for 12 straight hours. 
and now like a lot of the <laughs> a lot of the joy gets kind of yeah taken yeah out yeah of it. the the more joy is like in watching them enjoy it and you're like yeah 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 totally. you know you, you like lost your appetite for it almost yeah I'm trying to think of the recipe that had the highest number of reps I mean I brought up cheesecake because that was like a particularly hard one yep um, because like the recipe iteration time is long like you gotta uh, make the thing that takes a couple hours. You gotta let it cool down at room temperature, put it in the fridge, and then let it set up overnight. Yeah. So it's like Saturday night, you know, like the, the video on Thursday didn't work out, the video on Friday didn't work out. I had like filmed it twice, and I'm like, I just don't wanna make another, like the 500th cheesecake video on the internet. Yeah. I'd like this recipe to be exceptionally good. So we did it on Friday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday was like, I have to go back to the drawing board, redo this entire recipe. Yep. And then we filmed it a third time on Monday. Yeah. And by that time I was like, I never want to eat cheesecake yeah. again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think that is like a frustrating thing when you're, when you have to, you know, especially it is like something like that as perfect example where you're just stuck. And it's like, well, this takes, this isn't like a, this isn't like another pasta dip dish I could whip up in 30 minutes, right? Yeah, and it's outside of my expertise in a way that like the levers are unclear. That's really frustrating. Like savory cooking is the, and bread making has been the majority of like my career. So I know pretty, pretty much based on one iteration, like what, ne what needs to change to make version 2.0 close to 100%. Yep. Cause I've done so much recipe developing and bread making over the years. But like when it comes to pastry or whatever, it's sort of like, oh, I think like maybe more brown sugar, but it's like, I'm like 4% sure it's gonna work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because like, yeah, anytime for that stuff, like, it is like a, a mixture of, you know, it's like, it is like a little bit of more science-y for baking stuff where you can like clearly A-B test things, whereas like for savory, I feel like it's a little bit harder to like dial in specifically, oh, does this need, you know, a tiny bit more of this or a bit more of that? Yeah, it's like... Well, it's more art, less science for sure. Like my wife, Lauren, who's filming right now, she uh, she's like my partner on the channel my main taste tester and like we we put all the content together um together we do it all together and she like really freaking hates when i do big uh like pastry recipes to yeah. the point where she's like just at this point she's like no we can't do that <laughs> because like it makes the mood in the house so dark because like i don't know what to do i'm frustrated we got to make the video can't not make it Sometimes, there's been a few times we've pulled the plug though, where I'm just like, ah, we're switching gears. You're just dude. like off of it, yeah. Next recipe. All right. All right. So what uh, what are you you doing? Onions, garlic for the for the beans over there? Yeah, we're gonna do onions, garlic, fry some spices, and then uh, we'll mush some beans, season them up with salt and lime. It's kind of like my go-to. I've got ground cumin here. You were like, I'm I'm post. Where did my ground cumin go? I've got I've got. I've got seed here. Yeah, I'm, I'm grinding. I'm, I'm grinding up my own. Uh, this is this is yeah. That's the I, bad boy I, player, I, I'm so. like I'm a mortar and pestle guy now. Like it's it's who I am. So I'm grinding up some minced garlic and dried cumin that I'll mix with powdered chili powder and smoked paprika for the beef. And what do you got going on the the sizzler back there? Yeah, so I I let it completely sizzle like on its own to like develop a crust. Then I'll add spices, this spice mix, and some tomato paste then I'll crush everything up into like those fine little pebbles that you get like. Yeah, a, yeah. It's definitely an elevated Taco Bell beef, but it's like kind of my favorite like quick method because like it's pretty hands off. You know, like I really haven't been doing anything. You know, I'm just yeah. like, I'm just like letting it brown while I'm like assembling spices. When you're making it fast, you got, you have to crumble it down super far. Otherwise it's like pretty chewy. Yeah, exactly. Um, if you've ever had the time like to actually braise ground beef, like it does get to that actual taco belly, like very crumble. Like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's almost like, uh, it's like, it's so soft. Like, uh, yeah, it's like, it's, it's very interesting. I don't it's know. special. It's, it's, a, it's a special type of thing though. It's so crumbly. Cause like you've, you've dissolved all the connective tissue. Yep. So it just becomes almost like a meat paste. Yeah. It sounds disgusting, but it's actually kind of good. Yeah. This is going to be like a lot more of like a fresher Tex-Mex. Yeah, it, it's Fine. definitely more refined, which I feel like is something you lose. You lose like the, like, I don't know what you call it, like fast food feel, trying to like make fast food at home. It's very good, but it, sometimes it can be almost so different yeah. that you miss the, you miss like the plain fast food factor. 
in yeah, a way. for sure. I was watching your uh, Big Mac fast food video, and it's like so interesting, just like how different. Oh my god! I'm like, I'm like, I'm gonna use ground, ground cumin because it's faster, but I like literally can't get it open. Oh no, dude! How am I gonna do this? There we go. I'm telling you, the uh, the scale of the homemade Big Mac was like it was like three times bigger. Yeah, a totally that, different thing. That's another thing I, I realized, like how much the marketing materials for fast food is yeah. just like gives you a very skewed perspective of like what you're actually getting. While we continue to cook, let me thank today's sponsor, Made in Cookware, whose stainless steel saucier and carbon steel griddle are the key stars in this video. Made in designs professional quality products for the home cook that are also trusted by multiple three Michelin star restaurants. And let me tell you why the stainless steel collection is one of my favorites. The five ply stainless clad pans are crafted in Italy and can go from stove top to oven with ease up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Here we're using the stainless steel saucier for the beans, but the skillets are amazing for browning beef, searing steaks, sweating aromatics, or reducing acidic tomato sauces. So if you want to check out Made In Cookware and save on your order, head to the link in my description and thank you again, Made In, for sponsoring this video. Oh yeah, I mean like there's, that's, that's kind of, it's black magic, like the photography and marketing that goes into it. But as somebody as, like who photographs food for a living kind of, you know, making thumbnails for the videos, it's something that I've come to really enjoy is like the food styling part. Yeah. Because like it's almost like how pornographic can I? Okay, I just, I'm I'm looking for like a uh, what do you need? Like what do you a need? stirring thing. Uh oh, uh, uh, a spatula. Yeah, I got you. Oh yeah, so it's like a it's like a goal of like how pornographic can I make this thing look? Yeah. And uh, so like much respect to McDonald's and Arby's and stuff for making sandwiches look that good. Yeah, I, one thing I struggle with with food photography, I, I feel like it requires patience, and I don't have that. And I feel like it's. You know, cause like it's tough to make it look perfect for a photo because like you're working with a freeze frame. Like, especially if you're like melty cheese or something like that or, or something where there's like a drip component. Oh my like, God. Like trying it's... to get a perfect, I, I just don't have the patience for it. It's such a challenge. It gets really dark at our house too when, we, when, it, when it becomes thumbnail time. So thumbnails get shot after the, like the majority of the filming is done because that's obviously when the thing you're photographing is ready. Yep. So like you're already mentally pretty, I, f I film the videos by myself. So it's, you're already like two, three, four hours in, sometimes five, where you're just like, I'm by myself moving the camera constantly. It takes a lot of focus to like capture all that, get all the angles and stuff I want. So you're mentally like super tired. Yep. And then you have to like, okay, we have to time this cheese melt perfectly. We've only really got one shot. Otherwise I got to remake the whole, the whole thing. And sometimes it gets like, we've gotten a lot better at it, but there's been times where like Lauren and I fight a little bit because it's like <laughs> we miss the photo or whatever, or like I'm too particular about the temperature of the cheese and then it like firms up and it's like, shit, we got to do it again. Yep. Yep. No, I, uh, I, I know that. I know that struggle. I mean, even videoing certain things like trying to get the right texture on camera before it like seizes up. Yeah. Like especially those like pasta dishes. Yeah. Those are like, I find very frustrating to Oh yeah. get I, like the, the up close shots, like move, you're moving a camera and then there's like, you know, it's seized up a little bit and you're like, all right, well. I just did carbonara last week. I'm adding a little water to this by the way, to deglaze the onion, garlic and yeah, sure. spices and then to um, give the beans a little bit of something to, uh, Tenderize with? What? Not tenderize. What am I trying to do here? I don't know. I'm trying to figure out too many new things at once. Yeah, so we just did carbonara. Um, and like that one is like the king of all a minute pasta cookery. Yeah. <laughs> like it's only cool and delicious for like seven minutes. Yep. And then it turns into a completely different thing. So trying to get that captured into a thumbnail and on video. Like, I mean, it was like a one pot recipe. So you're making the whole thing start to finish and you don't want to be like, okay, I guess I'm going to redo the whole thing just so I can take one photo of it. Yeah. Yeah. Like but, I, I definitely have had to redo some where I'm like the photos I took was just like not good, but only on things where it's like not a, not a big deal to like retake it really quickly. Yeah. Honestly, like most food is hard to photograph. Yeah. Like there's, there's very few things that are like naturally like, oh, okay. Just like first try, I'll get it. Like soups. 
I don't, I don't know if you've done many soups, but like, I feel like soups are really hard to photograph. Yeah, they look pretty, they look pretty uh, frumpy straight up. All right, I added a little bit too much water into these beans here. I'm gonna have to give them a hard simmer to get them ready by the time the delivery gets here. All right, so I got some lettuce chopped up here. Yep. I'm gonna dice some tomatoes so that we can make this a double decker supreme. For those of you who aren't like versed in Taco Bell, supreme just means sour cream and tomatoes. Like, yeah, like the most basic top. I didn't even realize there was a supreme. Like, I, I thought like the regular soft shell got, or not, not soft shell, but hard shell got you there, but apparently it doesn't. I mean, you, like, you like in any fast food, bucks. like in any fast food, there's like a million ways you can order something, but it's really all the same. Like hard shell with sour cream and tomato is ta is a taco supreme. Yep. Uh, I got the beef done. I'm gonna. I guess I should have had you taste it before, just in case you need to dial in anything. But we're kind of stuck with what we got if it's not. This is. Uh, I'm having a really hard time getting through this tomato skin. I'm just gonna go the other way. There we go. I could have could have probably sharpened my uh, my knives for you a little bit. It's sharper than mine, dude. Like <laughs> maybe just a, a slightly rubbery. Yeah, early rubbery in my tomato. cooking career, like I was, you know, you're. It's like anything when you're a young man, you're like, I'm insecure, so like I'm gonna find ways to compensate for that. And it's like in the kitchen, I'm gonna have the sharp, I'm gonna have the sharpest, most expensive knives in this whole place. Yep. And uh, so I would sharpen my knife at work like three times three times a week. One thing I've noticed with knives is how, I mean, even if it's not like perfectly sharp, it's so much more sharp than the average like home cook. Like the worst thing for me is like when you go on vacation and you don't have your knives yeah. and you're like, you're like, how do people cut with this thing? Like yeah. it's not, it's, I, whenever I see comments like, oh, like it takes a long time to cut up things. It's like, you probably have a really dull knife because it's so frustrating to like, be basically crushing onions instead of like actually, yeah. you know, slicing through them. It can take a lot of fun out of cooking. Yeah, I, I, I agree. If you don't have the right stuff, like you're gonna have a hard time. Like, I mean, that's not to say you need like fancy stuff, but no. even just like the baseline, I put wait, I put so much water in this. <laughs> just like having the, a couple of baseline things, like if your knife is super dull, you're gonna have a bad time. Yeah, yeah, there, there are like a lot of, um, you know, you don't need like a ton of tools, you just need like, I mean like, cutting board, knife, and like a couple like solid pot and pan choices. And I feel like you're, you're pretty yeah. much like good to go. I did way too much cheese, but. Like pots and pans that aren't going to like burn food. That's like pretty much the minimum requirement. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, dude, so like Taco Bell, honestly, like they've kind of started, uh, I guess I haven't had it in a while, but the last couple times I've had it, there's been not enough cheese. So like this one's gonna be, I think inherently better because it's gonna have like the proper amount of cheese. Yeah, as I've gotten like fast foods, I think they they definitely skimp on the like dairy and the meat stuff. Like plenty of iceberg it, though, bro. Yeah, like they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna load you with iceberg, which is a critical component. I like want to do a deep dive into why iceberg lettuce is one of the most important ingredients that you can have because yeah. like why do you think it, it adds so much like crunch and freshness to like any dish, and it's like yeah. a sandwich without it, like a burger without it, like uh, you know the talk about like it's. It's like the plainest thing, but it, it provides so much texture and uh, like freshness and like a little bit of, you know, wateriness too. The type of freshness it's bringing is, is very different that no other like, let's say more nutrient dense lettuce yeah. variety has. Yeah. Like green leaf, it's not the same. Yeah, or like even, even romaine, which is like pretty close, but it's like, if you use ro like chopped up romaine on, you know, something like this, you'd be like, ah, this is not, it's not right. You yeah, know, it doesn't, sure. it doesn't get it done. I don't know how to describe the flavor of iceberg, but it's like when, when it's right, like it's, when you find the right context for it, there's nothing that can compete for sure. Okay, so we got, uh, on, let's do a little, little more onions just for the thing. So I guess uh, we got onions, lettuce, we got the cheese. Oh, I gotta get the taco shells, but other than that, I think we're. Uh, okay. Are we gonna heat those or are we gonna go, are we gonna raw dog them from straight from the package? Uh, oh yeah, I forgot. Typically you do toast them, don't you? Yeah. You know? So here's a fun story. I'm gonna call out my uncle and aunt. Sorry guys, Gary and Mary, if you're watching. We had tacos at their house like last summer or whatever. And they're like, yeah, we're having a pool party slash taco party. They didn't heat the hard shells. They're just sitting on the counter in the box and they're so stale, bro. I'm just like, guys, 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 like I could have eaten before I came over. Like I don't, like, I don't need to eat these like untoasted shells. You know, we might be, uh, we might be cramped on time now because I forgot, I didn't, I didn't think about this. I haven't like, I guess I haven't done the, the hard shell tacos in a long time. 
So the beans, but they are they are definitely kind of like stale-ish in this package. I can tell. So we've got a rustico paste here. Yep. I'm gonna taste these now. I think they're gonna need some lime and salt. Okay. Now I gotta find like salts back here. Uh, do you did you have a lime out? I don't remember. Uh, there was one around here somewhere. Uh, uh, where did it go? Oh, here it is. Oh, over by your uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Whew. That is. Pretty freaking hot. The onions are tender, so that's good. A little bit of lime. And honestly, maybe just a little bit of salt. What's your salt brand? Are you Diamond, are you uh, Morton or Diamond Crystal? Uh, I use Morton. Add a, add a baby. But uh, yeah, I think I've just been using it so long. Cause like, you know, that's the thing. It's like, you, whatever salt you use, like you just gotta be comfortable with it, you know? Yeah, you just gotta And know. it's like, once you're comfy, it's like hard to, it's hard to actually like, yeah. you know, it's like learning a new thing, right? Yeah, because it becomes like, especially if you're seasoning by taste or feel like, and not measuring it. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, and it dissolves at a different rate too. Like there would be at weeks in the restaurant where like all that they had would be diamond crystal. We were a kosher or a Morton's most of the time. And then yep. like, they'd be like, oh, all we could get is like the generic or the diamond. And it, like, you would think that it doesn't make a difference, but it, it dissolves differently. Yeah. And like when you're seasoning things fast, all of a sudden like, oh shoot, like that got 30% saltier than I expected because right. like, it, like whatever diamond crystal I think just dissolves a lot slower. And I feel like there's bigger stakes too. Like when you're actually in a, in a, kitchen because oh, yeah. like it's going out to a bunch of people and time you know. is of the essence so it's like oh if you screwed up the the a la minute sauce you were making yeah it's like cool like now that table has to wait like nine more minutes for me to make it again right right yeah it's like almost impossible to make something less salty like the one of the most like sort of uh classic young line cook moves would be like they over season something and then they're like oh shit like i have to make it less salty. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of the thing. Let's say it's soup or whatever. Yep. And it's like the amount of the thing that it takes to dilute it a is lot. like the equal amount of the thing you already have. Yeah. So just double. And it's like, there's no way to get that hot in time. It doesn't work. So it's just like start over. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause I think that is something, I mean, it's a, uh, I feel like a lot of home cooks have the problem of like, they don't salt enough because they're afraid of over salting, which is like valid excuse, but like, you don't really learn. I feel like what the flavor, like what, that flavor potentially can be unless you do go too far. Yeah. But then like, yeah, you do end up like wasting stuff unless you can, you know, say double the thing and add unseasoned double. But like, that's obviously a big task. You yeah, know? And especially at home, it's not like you've got a bunch of stuff around to like size the batch up or whatever. Especially yeah. when it comes to stuff like soup or like chili. I think that's the thing that is easiest for people to screw up in terms of seasoning because when it's under seasoned, it's so lame. Right. But when it's over seasoned, it's completely useless, so. Um, that would be the thing that we would use to teach cooks mm -hmm. how to season would be they would season the soup uh, because it takes patience. It takes like, if you're seasoning up like eight quarts of soup at a time, you have to taste it, get as close as you can, come back a minute later so your palate isn't fatigued, season it again, taste it again. That way you're like, you know, you're in a good spot. I know that like, it was, this is kind of like really maybe most restaurants aren't really going <laughs> to those lengths. Yeah. But, if you're like in a fine dining restaurant, you're trying to train a young cook how to really know where the threshold of salinity is in for food and like what what's pleasurable and what's not enough. That's a really cool cool way to do it. Cause yeah, like I, I think one of the things I realized is like temperature is pretty big, you know? Yeah. Like if something's super hot or super cold, the flavors are completely different than like kind of room temp or, you know, at like a serving temperature of like, you know, maybe 160 yeah. Fahrenheit for soup or something. Like if you're like the serving temperature is gonna be different from what you're actually cooking it at, right? Yeah, totally. Like cold stuff needs to be way saltier. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. So we're ready, like where's T-Bell? Oh yeah, let me, I haven't even, I haven't even checked my phone. Let's see, let's see what we got. We have, it's heady, it's, it's still eight minutes away. All right, well I think we should probably. Let, let's at least, yeah, we can prep stuff. These feel pretty floppy. I was gonna, do we need to warm these up, but these feel good. Yeah, right? those were like baked fresh uh, this morning from the grocery store, Whoa. so. Yeah. Austin's got yeah. good Mexican food. Yeah. That's new to me. Yeah, Austin usually has like you Just can kidding. get you can get your tortilla plug like in it in several places, which is which is nice. Actually, let me check these, make sure they're heating up a little bit at least. I saw there was an El Milagro like tortilleria in yeah. East Austin. Dude, those tostadas and like tortilla chips are my favorite. Or they're like Totopos, I think, like the super crunchy ones. Yeah. And I love how corny they are. Like the corn flavor is like 
Because like compared to something like this, it's like not really that corny, yeah, but it's like the deep corn flavor of like those tostadas is like, whoa. Yeah, like actually nixtamalized corn, it's really hard to describe that flavor. Yeah. Like earthy falls short, but it is yeah. like, if you haven't had it, it, it is like the earthiest thing you could think of. Yep, yep. And yeah, like when I was like in Mexico City, just like being able to get, you know, fresh corn tortillas, like where they like put a little bit of, you know, a little sprinkle of salt over them and they're like freshly, like it's like crazy. But even then, like they, they go bad fast. Like you get, they don't go bad, but you know, they get, they dry out and, and firm up a little bit. Um, but that's why they make like such good, you know, uh, tortilla chips and whatnot too. Yeah. It's like when you actually then fry them. But yeah, it is, it is really like a completely distinctive experience from, you know, a lot of maybe the more like commercial, you know, tortillas out there. It's in like also like such a unique experience. Like it's such a simple pleasure, like yeah. a well-made tortilla. And it's like hard to do at home. And something that I, I feel like would be a good video for your channel is like a nixtamal or like how to nixtamalize corn video. Have you, did you do that recently? No, I did, I did, I went into corn tortillas to like, you know, kind of talk about them and like why, you know, how to use stale, stale corn tortillas. But even for me, it's like, you know, as like, you know, like unless you're making them, I think like for a bigger group, like I'm not gonna like sit down and make fresh yeah. corn tortillas for like myself on like a, a random weeknight. Yeah, yeah, so like yeah. that is definitely a barrier where it's like, yeah, they are really good, you know? And if I was in, if I was back in Mexico City, it's like, no, I'm just gonna walk down and pay like a buck for like, 20 of these yeah. beautifully, you know, made fresh corn tortillas. But like, you know, I, I, like that's again, like the, 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 like the plight of a home cook is like a lot of things is like, yeah, it's like, well, you know, is it worth yeah, the yeah, squeeze? Yeah. Like you can get good, decent corn tortillas or like it's going to be good enough. You know, it's not yeah. going to be quite as good, which I feel like is, it's like that sliding scale, like where are you going to fall? Yeah. I mean, in the U.S. at least, if you live in an urban area, the likelihood of you being able to get very good tortillas is high. Yeah. But if you're like, a lot of people who watch my channel, like they live in places that aren't going, like it's not just a simple thing for them to go to a Mexican market and yeah. get whatever they're using. Like there's a couple places in St. Louis that sell fresh masa, they sell fresh tortillas. So if you're like on the hunt for a really great taco experience, it's a 10 minute drive away. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I totally like, there is a, a definite threshold with a lot of stuff, uh, like in terms of the home cook where it's like, the amount of time that goes into this is, yes, it's gonna give you a, a huge payoff, but oh, it's just barely worth it. Yeah. It's great, but it's like, it's gonna take yeah. you half of you a have Saturday. To, you have to be making it because you're enjoying making it yeah. rather than being like, this is a, you know, kind of a payoff to like fit in with my, you yeah. know, busy, busy night or whatever. Like there's definitely like that consideration. It's, a, it's like a big project. Yeah. yeah. Cause that's another thing too, is like how people comment, especially like overseas, like in Europe, when I've traveled over there and like was in France, like it was hard to find like good quality, just corn tortillas and a lot of other basic kind of um, Mexican ingredients, like certain spices, dried peppers and things like yeah. that. Like it's, it's hard to find. Yeah. So that's, and, and you can make something good, but like, like again, it's, it's good and it's, it's reminiscent of it, but it's not quite the same. And yeah. it's just like, it's, you have to make that. It's so ubiquitous. Mexican food is so ubiquitous in the U S that it's like never really even occurred to me that they wouldn't have it in other parts of the world. Right. Right. That's interesting. I mean like what, tor like fresh hand more handmade tortillas to me fall into a similar category as like fresh bread where at home, the opportunity for you to make close to the best thing you could eat on earth, you know, like in terms of like at home, it's totally possible to make bread that is as good as anything you'd get in the best bakeries. Yep. But it's, yeah, it's just like, is the juice worth, worth the squeeze? When you live in a, like a really, like Austin or Chicago or wherever, where you like, there's 25 people who make a great version yeah. in town. You can yep. just go buy it. Cause that's, that's too, it's like the flip side of like some of those other things, like, you know, you're in Paris or France, like there's like good baguettes and bakeries everywhere. Now, like the U S does have a lot of good bakeries and, you know, even classic baguettes and all those too. Like you can find them, but it's not going to be quite as readily available. Yeah, that's it's like, true. The baguette you may is need a to make one. a special, you know, you may need to make a special trip or like drive 10, 15 minutes or it's, and it's primarily going to be at yeah, bigger urban areas. Yeah. Over the last couple of years, I feel like the people who watch my videos has shifted a little bit from people who are genuinely super interested in the all day Saturday project who like they enjoy cooking so much or baking so much that they're like, it doesn't really matter what level of complexity. It's like, they just want a roadmap to make the best thing. Yep. I feel like that's like gone down a little bit. And I, I don't know if it's just like sort of like what is like meta, what is like sort of popular at a high level on YouTube or if like the zeitgeist of just people in general, like post COVID are looking for a little bit more fast recipes and stuff. 
But I, that, that's been a change for me is like now the process that I'm building in is not always like this is no matter what the best thing. This is like the best thing with this amount of time or with this sort of like small compromise. That, that seems to be like the, where the recipes are going a little bit more. Yeah, I think for me, like that's the big thing is like, you know, like everyone has like very unique circumstances where it's like, I think learning the, the like the, the best version is like very helpful to like then make a sliding scale of like, okay, I can make something that's maybe like 80% as good in like half the time or, or whatever, or yeah. maybe I don't. Or like 94% yeah. is good. Or maybe I don't have to yeah. spend, you know, X amount, like an extra like $10 on this specific thing. It's going to be really good, you know, without. So it's like balancing those two. But I feel like you need to go to the far ends to like be yeah. able to have the, the perspective of the other, you know, the other side. Yeah. If you're coming at it from like all shortcuts all the time, you're like maybe when you get out in the wild on your own, where you're trying to like make a recipe on the fly or like cook something intuitively or just like maybe you're not going to. If you don't go to the higher ends of technique, you're not. It'll be a lot harder to sort of like freestyle. Exactly. Make yeah. Something kind of on the fly. All right, we're one minute away, so I think we can at least assemble ours in the okay, meantime. Okay. Cool. Um, I'll let uh, I'll let you drive. You can assemble. Okay. So, double decker taco. We're gonna start with a flour tortilla. Yeah. We'll just pop in the center, maybe. Okay. We can slide this. Uh, Get these wet tomatoes out of here. Yeah. Uh, let me just I lost it. my knife. There we go. Um, yeah. So like the I don't know when when did they unknown. I, I I looked I, I it looked like this got discontinued in 2021 because they were trying to make it easier to order. <laughs> I guess I guess talk about like, too many options. That's funny because there's really. I mean it's the same it's just like the same things like you know it's not yeah. like they needed they it's not like they don't have the ingredients on hand though you know. <laughs> All right, so a soft shell taco with fruit refried beans in the middle, and then you put a hard shell in the middle of that. But you gotta make the hard shell taco first, I think. So we'll just get our bean tortilla and then. Yeah, it's kind of like a reverse gordita. Let's see how let's see how this ground beef tastes. Tastes great. Yeah. Man. Perfect salt. Yeah, it's uh like that's my favorite way to like do ground beef. It's just like let it sear on bottom. Don't touch, like just add salt to the top, don't touch yeah. it. Then spices and some tomato paste. What tool did little, you use to break little. this down? Was that a spatula, metal spat? No, the uh, uh, like a mini potato masher. One of my favorite like mm, underrated yeah. uh, tools that I use all the time. Because I'll like I'll use it for I use it for I actually use it from the beans. I took it from your thing after you got done with it. Taco Bell, I goes lettuce cheese, which to me seems oh, it's like just yeah. I feel like you got to slightly have the cheese melted a little bit. Yeah, no? like I just feel like the combo of meat and cheese touching is yeah. great. Then we're gonna go lettuce. And then you have some crema here. Yeah, crema. The little onions, onion I don't if we think. Want it. I'm gonna I don't know if they onion, use it. I'm gonna go ahead and like call the make the pro level move and put a little onion on here. We'll put some tomato, and then. Hey, this, this actually smells like crema? Taco Bell to me. <laughs> I'm really surprised at how good that ground beef to tastes for only being like four minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, can you grab it? Oh, like a salt. Oh, okay, cool. We'll do a drizzle with this. Yeah. Little drizzle that might actually might actually be here. Let me check. It said it was a minute away, so it should be. All right, so we got the taco supreme, and then we're going to just like smush it in the middle of this, and kind of like push the beans up the side. Ooh, a little more on the outside. You don't want to skimp on the beans. We gotta get full coverage. Oh, man, the combination of soft, crispy, soft, bro. Yeah, that that like that's why it's like. It, like this and the, the Gordita Crunch and the Contra Supreme, it's like the texture is what carries it oh my more God. than anything. Yeah, it's not like, like it could it's be like tasteless the best tasting. and I would just, <laughs> I would still eat it just because of the texture. Yeah. We got to do some hot sauce too probably on this. Oh yeah, yeah. I got, I got a couple different varieties. Whoa, this thing holds itself up. This is like a pretty beautiful looking Damn, that taco. actually looks really good. I've got, so that's spicy habanero and I've got also got like a guajillo. Okay. So that might be a little bit closer to yeah, this probably like, like a mild Taco yeah. Bell. I'm kind of a weenie. I don't think I can handle the habanero. Yeah, that, like that, that habanero is like a little, it's a little, a little spicy. And then I'm gonna check, this should have got here. Oh yeah, it is, she just dropped it off. She's like sitting at the door. I don't wanna like disturb her. <laughs> Cause she's like just scared. dropping it in, so I don't And we're wanna, filming too? Yeah, I don't wanna be like in, in her face, be like, oh no. All right, I think we got it. Oh. Mag ripped. All right. 
We've secured it. So we still got to assemble this though. That's actually took a long time. How long have we been recording? Like 30 minutes probably? Yeah, because we, I think we started them a little early. All right, so we'll put the, this masterpiece aside. Okay, so I'm gonna just pop that over here. We can actually slide this stuff down, make, us, make a little more room for ourselves. Oh, dude, you got a crunch wrap too? <laughs> yeah, I got some extra items just because like I figured, you know, we, we may as well. We're doing it. We could talk about the hits. All right, I think this is the bean. Yeah, 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 okay. The, the, no, the no sauce, no beans yeah. burrito. We'll see, the scale I think is gonna be messed up. <laughs> yeah, because We might have to trim the- Yeah, yeah, the we can, tip. here, I, I grab the knife. We can, we can trim, trim the edges a little bit. Yeah, this doesn't look like a diaper at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I don't like the, uh, didn't, didn't enjoy that uh, yeah. vision you put, we put out have, there. All right, so we're gonna kind of like approximate the, the thing. Oh yeah, that's a pro move right there. Look at that, that was like pretty good. That I'm gonna was... taste the tortilla just to make sure it tastes good. Way less good than the one that you got. You know, they, they, they come through for us. So then, yeah, I got, I think, yeah, yeah. So yeah, literally just slot it. Slot on, it right dude. in. There's like no cheese on this thing. Dude, there's nothing on it. Oh, did I actually get a chicken one? Oh, well. It's not Wait, is this the Taco Supreme or the one? Uh, I don't remember. Cause I, I think I, this maybe? We gotta make sure there's, there we There's go. the beef, yep. Yeah, okay. More tomatoes, but, all right. So, we'll close it up. <laughs> it, looks, I mean, <laughs> it looks so sad compared. I know. I gotta trim it up. We gotta make like an attempt to. Yeah, yeah, we gotta do it justice, you know? We can't, we can't. Uh... Yeah, this is the food styling we were talking about earlier. Yeah. You gotta get all the details right. Does this one stand up? All right, fine. fine, it does. We can maybe make it okay. work. I'm so, I'm so excited. <laughs> All right, so we gotta quickly take a thumbnail because again, part of the process that, we, that we've talked about. So we're gonna thumbnail, we've made it. I don't know what time we're at, but it'll probably be pretty, this took forever. Like we, we've been just kind of hanging out. Yeah. Um, and then we'll come back and actually taste test them side by side. So we're just gonna cut. <laughs> okay, back in action. We, we got to do, we got to do the taste test, see how they, uh, see how they stack up. Stuff has definitely gotten soggy, so I think we're going to miss our crunch a little bit, but, uh, you know. I mean, this one was soggy it. when it got here. It is true. It is true. Taco Bell. Here we go. Taco. Probably would have been better fresh. Like, we, there was no crunch in my bite. I'm going to go for a bite two. Very soft. <laughs> Very soft. There's a little crunch on my top bite, but that's it. It is uh, pleasurable to eat though. Yeah, like the, like it's nothing off the charts flavor, but like the, the generic flavor of Taco Bell, I don't know why, is yeah. like appealing to me. And obviously appealing to a lot of people. It's just hot, mushy brown. I like it. I'm gonna finish this taco. Mm. Like it's. <laughs> it's it's like nothing a, special, but it's just like, I don't know. It's like a four out of 10. It's, it, yeah, it's just like a nostalgia. It's like, if you were evaluated it purely based off food, you'd be like, oh, this is like a two out of 10. And then it's like, <laughs> once you factor in the nostalgia, the fact that like, maybe you got it late night, yeah. like all these other things, it's like, oh wait, this is like. And it costs a yeah. dollar 70 yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And, and it fulfills a need. Versus these, these are, this looks these like are beefy cool. boys. I think like, these look, these look good. All right, I'm excited to taste that beef in context. Mmm. Ooh, baby. That beef is so much more flavorful. Obviously, there's almost no beef on the other one. Yeah. And like, this is like, to me, is always what happens. I feel like this is the like marketing photo version of what you, you know, like this is like what I would expect to you get, but you just don't get it. Yeah. Like the texture, there's so much more beef. There's so much more everything. And then it's just like more flavorful overall. Getting this taco without the crunch, it's just like kind of lame. But if you do get that soft, crunchy, soft combo, it's so sick. It's untouchable. Like it is the most hyper palatable combination of textures. <laughs> it's kind of like a, a higher protein uh, cheesy gordita crunch with the beans. Mm. Like low key might be a, a good little, uh, you know, if you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I want to go get fast food. It's like, this is at least a little bit higher protein option. One thing I love about this style of taco is this top part is like a salad. <laughs> Sour cream, tomatoes, and iceberg. 
if there's enough of it on there, you get a little taco sauce. It's like a very refreshing, mm -hmm. <laughs> delicious thing to eat. That's like very different from the southern part of the taco. Yeah, yeah. Which is all business, all meat. <laughs> that is true. Like you get, you can make some very uh, bites that are like very different depending on like what you're feeling, you know? Man, that's so good. I mean, I think Taco Bell should bring it back. What are you guys doing? Like, this is actually the first time, because when you mentioned this, I, I actually, like, had never ordered it or, like, had it before. But I think this this is probably, like, an easier option to make at home than the Gordita Crunch. Because, like, the problem you get with the Gordita Crunch is, like, the pita is, like, a very specific pita. Yeah. And it's, like, the store-bought pita or even a homemade pita is, like, not quite the same. Whereas, like, this is, like, a better replica, ex like, experience at home and, like, really, really easy. The pita for the cheesy gordita crunch is like puffed. It's almost yeah. like fried or something. Like it has a lot more texture than just like a straight up pita. Yeah. Regular pita, like it's too bready. Yeah, I agree. No, yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big fan. Like I'm a, I'm a double, double, double decker taco guy now. Taco Bell, if you're out there, please. I'm begging you. It's so good. And like, again, two double deckers, too soft, too hard, Baja Blast. It's Baja like, Blast is key. <laughs> it's like $7.89. You're gonna have a really good time. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, Brian, thanks for the yeah. uh, thanks for coming in and cooking. Uh, you know, some some fast food that was really fun, and like hopefully you guys all enjoyed the uh, the live format, the combo. Hopefully it was uh, not too wide ranging for everybody, but uh, that'll wrap it up for wrap it up for us. Check out Brian's uh, video or channel. We did another video for his channel. It'll be in the description. That'll wrap it up for us in this one. Catch you in the next one. Peace, y'all. All right, sick. I'm gonna just keep No, going. yeah. It's like always what happens with mine. It's like, like I, I leave a little something, but then I just immediately like demolish the rest of it anyway. Yeah. Mm. And especially when you're not, like I'll, I'll eat this, you know, like I'll just not get tired of this ever. I'm so happy.